In this video, I want to talk a bit about some of the differences within Windows Server licensing. We're going to talk about the Windows Server support lifecycle. We're going to talk about grandfathering rights of Windows Server. We're going to talk about Windows Server Azure Hybrid benefit for a bit. Extended security updates and what they, those are. And I'm going to wrap up with some uh, general comments of things that we did not cover before, but are important to this video. When we look at the, the server support lifecycle, you see all the additions from 2003 up until the latest version 2022 and what's their status or of support or mainstream or extended support. So typically Microsoft has a five year mainstream support lifecycle with an additional five years of extended support when that runs out. So you can already see that at the moment, 2012-2012 R2 uh, is the final one that ran out of extended support. And we're currently in the 2016 to 2022 support lifecycle stage. So if you have run anything older than 2016, you have already run out of any support from Microsoft, be it mainstream or extended support. You only option for machines for 2012 and 2012 R2 is to use some something called extended security updates. And we'll talk about that in a few slides. Like we talked about before, anything prior to Windows Server 2012, I used to have a different licensing model that used to be a per processor model. And that per processor model was available in three flavors, data center, enterprise, and standard edition. And um, with the new model, so going from processor to core licensing, a few things changed, namely that they went from per server and per processor licensing to per core licensing. So the per server and per processor licensing was no longer available and you would only have the per core licensing model. Microsoft also took away one edition, the enterprise edition, but seeing as that Microsoft has always given down edition rights for all their servers, it might be important to understand if you're still running very old out of support uh, servers, what your rights are. So if you're still running, for instance, uh, 2003 or even 2008, this might be important to you. I suggest you don't use those versions because Microsoft generally doesn't support those anymore. But if your environment is still stable and you don't have any issues, then you can do whatever you want, obviously. But because these down edition rights, if you, for instance, buy 2022 uh, data center or standard edition with software assurance, it's important to understand what you can do with those licenses if you are running very old editions. On the screen, you will see the down edition rights to those older versions. Especially the enterprise one is interesting here because with both the standard edition and the data center edition for the latest version, you get the down edition to Windows Server Enterprise. With Data Center, you get the down edition to any edition that you want. So you can use Data Center Enterprise or Standard, and you can down a version to whatever version you require. But with Standard, it's only the Enterprise, the Standard Edition for the versions that were available at that moment in time. With licensing Windows Server, data center and standard with software assurance, you get something called the Windows Server Azure Hybrid benefit. Basically, Microsoft has a software assurance benefit to help you reduce cost within Azure. If you want to know more and do a deep dive on the Azure Hybrid benefit, we'll link this in the description below. But basically, if you have any server licenses with software assurance and you're going to migrate your environment to Azure, you can still use those licenses with SA to reduce cost within your Azure environment. So how does that work? Basically, if you spin up a VM in the um, Azure portal, you will typically pay the Windows Server license uh, on a license included basis. Uh, and on month over month, you will be charged by Microsoft for using Windows Server on your um, Azure VM. However, if you flag that VM with a bring your own license or Azure hybrid benefit, then you would only pay the compute base rate for that machine, similar to a um, Linux rate, for instance, for virtual machines. And um, you will not have to pay that license software fee for Windows Server in the Azure portal, but rather you already paid for the software assurance cost in, for instance, your enterprise agreement which means that Microsoft allows you to reduce that cost to zero for your VM. Now, there's some additional rules and regulations with it. If you're doing a migration from on-prem to the cloud, 
you have 180 day concurrent use right to use it on-prem and in the cloud to make that migration. The 19 day reassignment rule applies for all Azure virtual machines. And if you don't know what this means, check out our basic licensing series where we talk about um, the reassignment rule. Um, this can also be done for certain Linux dis distributions uh, like Red Hat Linux and uh, SUSE Linux. If you have licenses for those, you can use them to reduce any cost of your Linux distries within uh, Azure as well. The way this works is you count the amount of course with software assurance you have within your contract. And for any 16 cores with Windows Server license with software assurance, you can either use them split over two different virtual machines with up to eight cores or one virtual machine with up to 16 cores. So if you, for instance, purchase a Windows Server with software assurance license with 16 cores, you can split those over two different VMs of up to eight cores. And there you get to the one of the most important rules for as Windows Server Azure Hybrid Benefit, which is the minimum of eight cores that you have with the virtual machine licensing as well. So if you want to reduce that cost um, through the Azure Hybrid Benefit, any VM would need to be licensed with at least eight cores. So if you have a two core VM in Azure and you want to use Azure Hybrid Benefit, you need to assign or reserve eight core licenses to cover that two core virtual machine in Azure. Uh, also is extended to Azure dedicated hosts. hosts um, and I want to go to the most important part here. There's a big distinction between how Microsoft allows you to use Windows Server standard licenses versus Windows Server data center licenses. So each set of 16 cores. So Microsoft allows you to use Windows Server Standard Edition in a different way to Windows Server Data Center Edition for the Azure Hybrid Benefit. So for any machine that you want to cover with Windows Server Standard, you can either use those licenses on your own premises or in the Azure Cloud. You cannot use your Windows Server Standard licenses also in the Windows Server Data Center Cloud, uh, Windows Server Azure Cloud. With Windows Server Data Center, that's different. If you have licenses that you're using on-prem for Windows Server Data Center, you can immediately use those to also reduce the cost of any VM in your Azure Cloud. So you have that duality there where you can use them still on your own premises, but also use them uh, within Azure to re reduce any cost of your Windows Server VMs. That's very interesting. However, if you just you know, want to benefit from Windows Server so, uh, licenses with software assurance in the Azure Cloud, so for instance, you want to buy new licenses to use Azure, bring your own license within the scope of the Azure Hybrid Benefit, that is the best option to do with Windows Server standards. So don't buy Windows Server Data Center licenses. Windows Server standard licenses, new licenses with SA in combination with an Azure VM running Windows Server is still cheaper than buying the Windows Server component within the Azure meter. Purchasing new Windows Server licenses with software assurance in combination with Azure Hybrid Benefit for any machine running in Azure is still cheaper than running a Windows Server uh, bring your, uh, or license included within Azure. For more on that, see the calculations that we do in the uh, Azure Hybrid Benefit deep dive that we have on our YouTube channel. Now, extended security updates. This used to be called premium assurance. So Microsoft saw that the life cycle that they had for Windows Server was faster than that the uh, organizations could renew their environments. So as of Windows Server 2008, they moved to uh, extended security updates um, with the latest version being for Windows Server 2012. Standard Microsoft lifecycle policy was just not sufficient. So you get to have the five years of mainstream support, five years of standard support, and then you can buy extended security update licenses to get an additional three years of support on uh, these older versions. And right now, that version is 2012 with 2012 R2. Um, at the moment, that is being that you with 2012 and 2012 R2, you can purchase that through um, Azure Arc or through buying a license for extended security updates within your enterprise agreement. The Azure Arc route is freely available as a license within your enterprise agreement would require a concession from the 
the side of Microsoft. And it would require active software assurance for any and all of the, the servers that you try to cover with that extended security update. It costs approximately 75% of the full license. So every server that you try to cover with extended security updates will get a big premium to keep them within support. And this is fully optional. So if you don't want those extended security updates, you definitely don't have to buy those. You can just keep them running as they are right now. You just won't get any security updates if Microsoft releases them. So sign up to this in Azure Arc or buy the license through the enterprise agreement that would require you to go to your account team and get them to bring out a quote for these licenses. Finally, some general comments. Licensing external users for Windows Server. You can use user and device and or device calls to do this, but if there's a lot of external users that are accessing your environment, for instance, if you're hosting a web server, then a Windows Server external connector might make a lot of sense for you. And these are actually required if you are running these web servers. A single external connector license is required per physical server that you have these roles set up. So if you run multiple web servers on multiple different physical machines, you require, re require multiple external connectors. License mobility is available for Windows Server, but it does require software assurance on all your licenses that you want to use in a different server farm or in a different server environment like with an outsourcer. There are step-up licenses with Windows Server and System Center available in the Enterprise Agreement. So moving from a lower edition, standard edition, to data center edition, you can buy that additional uh, functionality by just paying for the difference between the Windows Server standard license and the Windows Server data center license, for instance. And finally, if you buy any of these editions for Windows Server, data center, standard, or essentials, you can downgrade any of the machines or additions that you see on the right hand side so for data center you can downgrade to data center enterprise standard or essentials edition if you want for standard you can only downgrade to enterprise standard or essentials and for windows server 2022 essentials you can only downgrade to a previous version of windows server essentials only with that we're coming to the end of this series about windows server licensing we do hope you found this interesting and uh, you've learned a lot from us if you did, we'd love to hear from you. If you think there's something missing here and you'd like to learn more, please let me know. I'll be sure to update this on a regular basis as things change. And with that, I want to say thank you all and goodbye.